Hello. In today's lesson, we're going to be covering data validation and conditional formatting. These are very useful features if you need to prompt a different person that, uh, other than yourself, if you're sharing a workbook or you need to get uh, values or input from someone, it's a little bit extra information that you can prompt them either the correct values that they need to get, uh, a drop-down list, and changing a cell color based on certain information in either that cell or a different cell. So today uh, we're going to start off with data validation and in order to access this, it's built into Excel by default, you would want to go to the data tab in the ribbon toolbar, click on data validation, and it comes up with the first tab is settings. By default, Excel will allow you to enter any value into any cell in the worksheet. There's no data validation turned on by default. However, if you click on here, you can see that you can limit cells to only be whole numbers. You can limit it to be a decimal. You can have a list, which is going to be the same as a dropdown. It can be a date, a time, or you can give it a specific text length, such as uh, a zip code in the US would only be um, five characters. Uh, or custom, you can write any type of formula you want. For this one, uh, right now, we are going to try to do for cell A1 uh, a 10 digit phone number. So the easiest way of doing this is limiting it as a whole number. It comes up with data. You can choose anything that you want here, but we're going to do between. Since it's a 10 digit number, we know that if we start off with uh, 1 and This is the lowest a US phone number could ever possibly be. It's not realistic, but it is. And the highest would be. So this is going to be the lowest 10 digit number possible. This is going to be the highest 10 digit number possible. And all US phone numbers with area codes have to fall in between these two. Now that we have the phone number, we're going to want to alert the user what this should be. So. We don't want them to be putting any dashes or parentheses in there because that ends up um, what I call dirtying the data, meaning that sometimes people might put spaces in it, a different user might end up putting a dash in it, another user might end up putting parentheses, and it's not going to be consistent. Uh, if you have inconsistent data, it makes filtering and pivot tables and any other future type of analysis you want to do very difficult. So here we're going to say, please only enter uh, all right, numbers without spaces or dashes. Need to include the three digit area code. So this input message will always display as soon as a user selects that given cell, whether the user clicks in the cell or uses the arrow keys to enter it. Uh, unlike a comment field, where a comment you have to actually hover over with your mouse, the cell, this message will always appear even if they use the arrow keys to get into it. And then the custom error alert, uh, this will be if the user does not type in those 10 digits or they type in a letter or a decimal point or a dash or a space or parentheses, by default it will just come up saying, hey, you have an error, there's something wrong with your data but we can actually put something um, more precise in here which is uh, um, just a custom error, or we're going to call it error you must have exactly 10 digits and you cannot use any spaces, dashes, or parentheses okay spaces or dashes. We'll keep it at that. So now if I click OK, you see that since I'm selected in there, this is going to be the input message that always comes up. If I move off that cell, it goes away. If I move on, it prompts someone, hey, this is what we need to do. This is going to be a US phone number. Please enter the 10 digits in there. Now if I enter it, so eight, five, six, five, four, six. Uh, I have already put some formatting in here that will convert an actual 10-digit number to something that looks like 
uh, a cell phone number so it's easier to read and I'll show you how I did that in one second but if we do the same thing over here you can see that this number even though it's 10 digits is very hard to detect what the area code is what the last four digits are and it's, it's not very easy to uh, visually read but if we come over here I end up putting uh, an input mask onto the cell in order to do an input mask you simply right click on the cell you can go down to format cells and once again by default this should come up as general and you can see it gives you a sample data set that it would look like well in order to get something that would look like a US based phone number if you go down to custom we can actually end up typing anything that we want in here and if we end up using the pound sign that will represent any number possible if we end up using an at symbol that will represent any text character and there's some other ones that you can end up uh, putting in here you can see that this uh, open square bracket red close square bracket well um, is actually a technical kind of formula here but it will uh, make negative numbers red and positive numbers black um, it's going to take a little bit of internet searching in order to find out what you want to do but since we know that we're just going to do something real simple we want the first three digits to be inside the parentheses we want to have a space. We want the next three digits to be out there with a dash, and then we want finally the last four digits to be at the end. So parentheses, pound, 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 parentheses, space, pound, 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 dash, pound, 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 pound. And so that will now give us the information that we want. Now, if the user hasn't entered any information in the cell the user might not know that uh, in cell A1 he's prompted to do something all of the cells in the spreadsheet look the exact same well we can use conditional formatting in order to let the user know hey this cell here is different is special you probably want to pay some attention to it and you might need to act upon it so uh, a very common conditional formatting you can use is if the cell is blank it will be a certain color and then if the cell has a value in it it will turn to a default color so we're going to do that by clicking on the home button and the ribbon toolbar we can go to conditional formatting we want to go down to new rule and this will allow us to go beyond Excel's built-in formulas that they have we can actually use and I find it the most helpful is to write your own custom formulas because uh, you can test out the formulas outside of conditional formatting and you can see if you get a true or false value and that's all conditional formatting is looking for if the given uh, formula is true do this if not do that so it's basically a simple if then if then statement so we're going to want to say if the length of this cell right here is equal to zero we want it to be a special color if it's not equal to zero, so we have a phone number in there, then turn it to the default white. So now that we have that in there, we're going to click on Format. We're going to click on Fill. Click on More Colors. And then this yellow that's directly to the left and bottom, so the bottom left diagonal corner, I'm going to click on that and click OK and OK. And OK one more time. So now if it is blink it's gonna be a different color so I hover over it, it says US phone number oh, okay 856-547-3488 and then now that is entered in there uh, everything is okay that the color goes away I like to use that yellow color right there because if you're printing on black and white this yellow does not get printed out it gets printed as if it is white um, so just if you're gonna be printing off forms and you turn the default color to black and white and this might not be a required field but just an optional field then this yellow color is very useful because it won't be printed um, so now that we have that that concludes the first part of using conditional formatting to prompt a user to enter a cell once the user enters it have a display mask in here put in a data validation range to make sure that this is you know, if I try phone number it's going to come up with my custom error saying, hey, this was wrong. A second very useful uh, aspect of conditional formatting is to highlight duplicate values. So 
So I'm just going to come up with a whole bunch of numbers over here. And the easiest way, if I just want to look at this in a very, very quick glance and say which one of these numbers in this list are duplicates. So if I just call this numbers, if I highlight the column I want to find duplicate values in, I can come over here to conditional formatting. A default built-in function will be this first one underneath highlight cell rules and duplicate values. If I click it one time, and I'll take the default values, click OK. This will now come up and tell me 4 is going to be duplicated in this list, and so is 5. But none of these other values, 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, are not duplicated. Now this is a small data set, not that useful, but if you end up getting any type of reports coming out of SAP that might have thousands or tens of thousands of rows in the sheet, this is a very easy way of finding duplicate values in um, any type of column that you highlight. Now if you do have a very big data set and you have to scroll down to tens of thousands of rows, it's not very useful to include these non-duplicated values in here. So in order to filter and only show duplicated values so you can act upon it if it might be an error or to double check, um, you can highlight the title row that you're going to want to filter. You click on sort and filter underneath the home section of the ribbon toolbar click on filter and then once you have this filtered one of the features that Excel 2010 has is filter by color so over here we can say no fill which will give us the non duplicated values or we can say we want it to be the pink fill which is going to be the duplicated values so now you can have uh, a very very simple about three or four mouse click uh, way of finding duplicated values inside of a given column. Now sometimes you want to compare two columns side by side and see if they match exactly. There might be some spaces um, in between, there might be um, a different first name but the, the last name and the address might be the same so if you want to compare a column by column numbers two. So if you want to compare column by column uh, and see duplicated values, or we'll probably actually want to look for non-duplicated values between in row two, between column A and column B, simply what we want to do is, I'm just going to be copying this over for reference. I'm going to clear the rules from the selected values. And if this does not equal this, I want to have some type of visual reference for it. And so the easiest way of doing that is we're going to click on the first cell we want to compare. We're going to come up to conditional formatting. We're going to do new rules. Come down here and do a custom rule. And we want to do our equal sign again. If A2 does not equal B2, we're going to want to do a fill. Uh, yeah, we'll do red because that's going to make sure that we prompt it for it. And before we go on and hit anything else, what I want to do is remove these dollar signs because this right here is an absolute reference, meaning that if we copy this particular rule to any other sheet or any other cell in this sheet, it will always be looking at A2 and B2. It won't be looking at the relative reference. So here, we want to conditionally format cell A2 based on its current cell and the one directly to the right of that. So because of that, we want to simply just delete these dollar signs to make that a relative reference instead of absolute. So now it's saying if we copy this rule from A2 to A3, that this will then say look at A3 and compare it to B3. A4 compared to B4. So now if we click OK, Excuse me, we want to do uh, does not equal. So um, you want to do the less than, greater than, so it almost looks like a sideways diamond. So now if we click OK, you can see that this did not get highlighted because 1 does equal 1. But what we want to do now is manage this rule and continue this all the way down to the very bottom. So if we manage the rule, over here is only applying to cell A2 right now. 
Well, we want this to apply from A2 all the way down to A14. And now if we click OK, you can see here this is going to still be um, relative reference. It comes up saying that this number right here does not equal the one to the right of it. So we know that something was wrong when we're trying to compare these two columns. Um, so these are the two ways of, common ways of looking at duplicated values using either Excel's built-in highlight cell rules duplicate values or doing a new rule and using the formula to determine which cells to format does not equal or you can do equals remove the absolute references the dollar signs and once you click OK copy it to the entire range that you want it to apply to. If you have any questions please leave them in the comments below. Thank you.